Moonpig is a British company that makes personalised crap. If you want some cheap tat with a photo of someone's ugly baby on it, or if you thought that sending someone a, a tacky and overly expensive card with their name printed on it is a good gift, Moonpig was your place. Except. Yesterday, a developer called Paul Price disclosed a security hole which, according to him, exposed all Moonpig users' personal details to the level where you can reasonably start to pull off identity theft. So, how did it happen? Well, first, here's how well-designed apps work. You download the app, you log in with your username and password, they're checked on the server over a secure connection, and if they're right, then the app gets given a token, a random string of characters, like a browser cookie, that it can use in place of those details in future. That way, you're not storing the user's password anywhere on the device. And if the app is built by a different company entirely, like you have a login with Facebook button or something like that, then there are extra precautions you can take, so that third-party app never even sees the user's password for a moment. The most common one is called OAuth2, you can look it up if you're interested. Okay, so, send username and password, get token, use token in future to prove you're authorised. And that's what Moonpig did. Except, that token was always your customer ID. Now, on its own, that is bad. It means you have no way of revoking the app's permission, ever, even if someone changes their password. It means that if someone finds out your customer ID, they can impersonate you, and there's nothing you can do but close your account. But it's not truly catastrophic. Because a well-designed customer ID will be a, a long, randomly generated string. It'd take thousands of years to guess someone else's... Yeah, no. Moonpig's customer IDs were consecutive. If you were user 51624, then the person who signed up before you would be 51623. And the person after you is 51625. And remember, that's the only token being sent by that app, or by any malicious attacker pretending to be that app. It's that customer ID number. So you didn't need to guess anyone's username or password, you didn't need to do any sort of cracking. You could just send a request to Moonpig's servers, attach someone else's easily guessed customer ID, and responses helpfully come back for them instead of you. So with that, you could get the name on someone else's credit card, you could get the last four digits, you could get the expiry date and their address. That's been more than enough data in the past to call up Apple and get into an iCloud account, at which point it's game over. Nick their email address, nick their Amazon Web Services account if they've got one, and run up a $10,000 bill mining bitcoins on someone else's credit card. And here's the crucial thing, because those ID numbers were sequential, a malicious attacker could run through and grab the details of every single one of their customers. There was no rate limiting, no check to say, ah, that person's making a lot of requests there, maybe we should shut them down for a bit. It was a near perfect storm of incompetent coding. This isn't one line of code with a bug in it, these are decisions made by the site's developers. Don't get me wrong, I've written code this bad before, but it was years ago while I was learning, and I wasn't getting paid for it. Now, Credit to Paul Price, not only for discovering this, but for responsibly disclosing it. After finding the error, he kept quiet. He alerted Moonpig privately, gave them a fair warning, and only after they didn't solve it did he publish. Now, he left it for a year, which is about 11 months more leeway than he reasonably needed to give. In that time, has someone malicious swiped the details of every customer and kept quiet about it? We have no idea. Paul's report says he was also careful not to pull down details of anyone apart from himself and the test users he set up to check the bug. Remember, if you're playing about with stuff like this, there is a non-zero chance that a company will try to sue you, or to report you to the police, rather than solving the security hole. There's a lot of risk and not all that much glory. Now, I've found a couple of things like this in the past. Fortunately, both times, the companies in question solved them within 48 hours and said thank you. There are two lessons here. One for developers, I'll get to that in a minute, and one for the people who are non-technical who hire them. If you're not technical, but you're listening to this and thinking, oh no, is, is our site vulnerable? Get someone to test it. Even better, if you have the budget, hire someone outside the company to test it. The search term you need is pen test. And when someone reports a security bug, get it fixed. Say thank you. Don't go into PR spin mode and ignore it. On that note, I did ask Moonpig for comments this morning and gave them the whole day to reply. Their PR company very quickly sent their press statement which says, We can assure our customers that all password and payment information is and always has been safe. Now that is a suspiciously specific denial. They didn't mention addresses or impersonation or anything else or really any of the claims at all. I did ask about that and if payment information included the last four digits of card numbers. As I record this seven hours later, they haven't replied. They have, however, shut down the bit of their site that the app worked with. If they do get back to me, I will add it to the video description. And developers. 
If you're making anything that stores private information, code like you're being attacked, because you will be. Never trust user input. Assume that anyone sending anything to your site is malicious until proven otherwise, and prepare for the worst. Don't think, eh, nobody will ever notice this. Think, how could I break this? Because I guarantee you, there's someone out there who'll be thinking that too.